Today we're going to be installing the spoon subframe rigid collars for the Nissan Juke. As you can see we have two boxes. One box is the front set which includes lubricant, stickers, instructions, and the bushings themselves. The front set will fit all Jukes regardless of drivetrain. And the other box here we have is the rear set. Again it includes lubricant, instructions, stickers, and bushings. This set is for a front wheel drive Juke. An all wheel drive collar set exists and is slightly different but the concept is the same. Today's demo vehicle is going to be Joe's 2014 Juke Nismo RS. However, the process will be exactly the same regardless of year or trim. As previously stated, all-wheel drive will be slightly different, but the concept is the same. If this video is of any assistance to you, please utilize the link in the video description in order to purchase your spoon collars from Blackhawk Racing. Blackhawk Racing is already the cheapest place on the internet to purchase these collars, and by using my affiliate link below, I will get a small kickback from them. So if you appreciate the time and effort required to create this video, please consider supporting me with your purchase. We're going to start with the front subcolor installation. Now a conceptual understanding of these instructions is much more helpful than the time it takes to Google Translate them. Trust me, I did that approach on the last install. These two collars on the left here are for the front of the front subframe and are represented by red for the upper collar and blue for the lower collar. They correlate to these pairs of collars. These two collars, again red for the upper and blue for the lower, correlate to these pairs of collars for the rear of the front subframe. There's a yellow and a green option and that'll be explained later. The other included page has cutaway diagrams so you can know the orientation of the collars. Just look at the size and the shapes of the outlines and you can easily figure out how they are to be installed. This diagram is for the subframe front and the rear. Alright, let's get to work then, shall we? The first step is to get the juke up in the air. Obviously a lift is preferred and will make this installation significantly easier. However, you can get by just fine as I do with a set of jacks and jack stands. These are the bolts we'll be removing. Front passenger side, front driver side, rear driver side, and rear passenger side. There are three bolts on each side of the rear section that will need to be removed first. There are two 16mm bolts and four 18mm bolts that I'm removing with an impact gun. If you don't have an impact tool, they can be easily removed with a sturdy ratchet and a breaker bar. For high torque applications, use half inch drive shallow well six point sockets. This will reduce the risk of stripping out a bolt head or breaking a tool. I'm using the impact gun to break the four subframe bolts loose and lower the subframe a little. Beware, those front bolts will likely hold a nasty liquid surprise for you. Now lower the subframe incrementally by loosening each bolt a little bit at a time. You should do this process with hand tools rather than with pneumatic tools in order to maintain accurate control. The intention is to create about a half inch gap above each subframe support so that you will be able to slide the collar into place. To do the rear collars first, add a supporting jack underneath the back section of the subframe so that you can remove the rear bolts completely. You can now remove the rear subframe bolts and get the supporting bracket out of the way. I like to use a scissor jack for this application because it allows for a very controlled descent of the subframe. I really only need about an extra eighth of an inch before the collars will easily install on both sides. Make sure that you thoroughly knead the included lubricant in its tube before application as it tends to separate. Alright, finally it's time to install our first collar. As per the instructions, apply a generous amount of lubricant to the top and the bottom of the collar before installation. Refer back to the cross-section diagrams as needed so that you place the collar on top of the subframe support in the correct orientation. It should just drop right into place. Now repeat the same procedure on the other side. Thoroughly lubricate the collar and carefully place it on top of the subframe support. Raise the subframe into place until it is loosely seated. Remember that for the rear lower collar locations, we have to choose between the green dot collars and the yellow dot collars. If you use the green dot collar, you'll see it wiggles around loosely, but if you use the yellow dot collar, it fits quite snugly. Yellow dot collar, good. Lube your lower collar and stick it into place. Then place the lower support bracket into place and install the subframe bolt loosely. Repeat the same procedure for the other side. Lubricate the collar thoroughly, stick it into place, and then reinstall the lower support bracket loosely into place with the subframe bolt. Now reinstall the six bolts for the lower support bracket. Hand tight will be sufficient for now. 
It's time to do the front collars. Relocate your support jack to the front of the subframe so you can remove the two front subframe bolts. Unlike the rear, there is enough space to do one bolt at a time on the front if you choose. The support jack is more of a safety precaution than a necessity in this case. The procedure is the same as before. Lube your collar and place it on top of the subframe support. For the lower collar, lube it up, put it on the subframe bolt, and feed the bolt into place and tighten it loosely. Doing the driver's side now, remove the bolt completely, add lubricant to the appropriate collar, set into place on top of the subframe support, lube the lower collar, put that into place, install the subframe bolt, and then lightly tighten. Raise the front subframe back into place by lightly tightening each bolt with an impact gun. Include the rear support bracket bolts in the tightening sequence. The first round is just to raise the subframe up into place and get all the bolts in, not to torque it down tight. The second, or maybe even third time around, is where you will want to tighten each bolt to the appropriate torque values. Congratulations! The front rigid collar installation is now complete. Remove your jack stands, lower the car down, have yourself a refreshing beverage, give yourself a high five, and then let's get started on the rear collar installation. The rear subframe collar installation process is very similar to the front. The first step will be, again, to raise the car up to an acceptable height, either using a lift or jacks and jack stands. So in the rear subframe collar box, we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 collars that correlate to this red image. These blue images are all exactly the same, so we have six total along the bottom of the package. Then we've got one oddball guy here, and it has an obvious different shape and has a specific home, which is represented on this page here, labeled R2. We've got four bolts to remove per side in order to release the rear subframe assembly. An impact tool can be used on the first bolt, but I preferred hand tools for the increased control on the rear subframe assembly. Remove each bolt completely to determine its length, and then reinstall it by a few threads to give you the maximum working space for collar installation. Now repeat that same process on the passenger side, removing the three bolts holding up the subframe assembly, and then reinstalling them each by a few threads. You can remove the bolts completely on that side now, and that will allow the subframe to hang freely on the passenger side. Remember to lubricate both sides of each collar thoroughly before setting into place. The process on the rear is going to be essentially identical to the front. Once the collar is lubricated, just gently set it into place. You can move the subframe around as necessary to facilitate placement. Same process, lubricating the second collar, and now installing the second collar on the passenger side of the rear subframe. Here's what it should look like after the three collars are installed. Unfortunately, I did not record video of the third collar placement, but the process is exactly the same as the two that you just witnessed. Note that with a gentle push on the subframe, I can line up the bolt holes as necessary. I start the process of bolting up the rear subframe by hand tightening the easiest accessible bolt, which is the one with no collars. You can see a lubed collar is stuck into place already. That's our special collar that is uniquely sized, so make sure that it is installed in the appropriate location. I'm using a second jack to lift the rear of the subframe so that I can get the bolt hole to mostly line up. Then with a crowbar, I can get the hole to line up perfectly and thread the bolt into place by hand with minimal effort. Cars are bigger and stronger than you, so use appropriate tools to be smarter without frustration. The process is repeated for the two remaining bolts. After your collars are lubed, place them onto the bolts and then hand thread the bolts up into place, adjusting the subframe as necessary, taking care not to bind any threads. When they are into place, Hand tighten each one again so that they are seated well, but not torqued down. This is what it should look like with the three bolts installed, each with their respective pairs of collars. Now I can move the jack over to the driver's side and support the subframe so that I can remove the bolts on that side completely. Once the bolts are removed, I can lower it down with control to provide me the necessary working space above the subframe to install the collars. Now comes the familiar dance of lubing and installing the collars. Same as before, one collar for each of the three bolt locations. Start with the easiest bolt. Lube a collar, put the collar on the bolt, put the bolt into the hole, and hand tighten the bolt to prevent damaging the thread. To easily align the next bolt hole, use a jack to manipulate the subframe location. Lube a collar, collar on the bolt, bolt into the hole, and hand tighten. I chose to install the uncolored bolt at this time because it lined up and went in easily. Now you can install the final bolt by lubing up the collar, putting the collar on the bolt, and hand tightening that bolt into the final hole. Now you can tighten all of the bolts on that side. Tight, but not torqued. I prefer to do two passes of progressive tightening to ensure even seating. And remove the support jack. 
Back to the passenger side, we can now tighten those bolts. Once the bolts are tightened, go back and torque them down appropriately with a breaker bar. The uncollared bolt can be tightened in sequence with the subframe bolts or on its own, whichever you prefer. Proceed back onto the driver's side to finally torque those bolts into place. Don't forget that uncollared bolt, he also needs to be torqued down. The moment has finally arrived where we can lift the juke off of the jack stands and lower it down safely to the ground. Congratulations, you have successfully installed an entire set of subframe collars. You may now celebrate appropriately. Thanks for watching.